wow, did you guys see that that new logo and new intro? Ooh, shiny. I, I mean, I made it. <laughs> I know, isn't it cool? Well, I, I thought we were talking about WandaVision. You met yeah, us. It's but amazing. Really, but I'm really excited for the new logo. The, the funny thing is, I know that everyone but Ben has seen it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben's like, yeah. Hot new logo. It's shiny. Shiny. And right? new. It's, 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 it is our exclusive fake nerd, fake nerds watch logo. Uh, we got our own logo for the show now. We've been using Wait, the fake I nerd podcast logo. Random. I have a question because I know you have access to the logo. Why is our background still fake nerd podcast? Ah, shit. Also not, like, <laughs> also not like WandaVision or something. <laughs> you want to put the oh wait, god damn it. You want to put the logo like up here How in the corner? So you right now? It? I'm not high at all. It was just an oversight. Oh my goodness. What an idiot. <laughs> we're too far in now. I can't we're, we're way far. I can't change I mean, it. We're not live. It doesn't I mean I it Listen, says live. But just it's not like live. Wanda, let's just let's just reverse time. To start from the beginning. It's all good. No, it's all back. Next <laughs> next week. I'll have those all set up next week. This will be the First episode. Yeah. Hey guys, we're talking about WandaVision today. Spoiler alert. If yeah, that's spoiler, why you're here. Spoilers for the first two episodes of WandaVision, the first piece of MCU material we've gotten in over a year. Did and I miss them? Put that MCU in my veins. I need it. Yeah. yeah. It it was nice. It was nice yeah. to, to visit my friends again. You know. I, my, I real quickly. Hey, who real are you? Quickly, oh shoot. I'm Brandon C. McClure. With me as always is Ben Magnet. Huh? <laughs> and Ryan Eliopoulos. This is the first show we've ever recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Sparks witty. Jesus. Are you sure you don't want to just put a little Our bit maybe I, here on this Maybe planet. I should be high. I might be more coherent. <laughs> I love it. No, like, this is fully, fully expected with us. Hey, I love it. Wow, that is a shiny new logo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, look, this is the fake nerd, this is the fake nerd watch. WandaVision. Uh, we, we're, we're going to talk about the first two episodes of WandaVision. Um, I was really excited for WandaVision going into it. And when I was done with it, I was like, I, I w- we watched the Legends, you know, the Marvel Legends thing, where it says, like, the 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 people. And I was like, oh, that, uh, that, man, I really like these characters. I really like these, these movies. I'm going to watch a movie. So I watched Age of Ultron today. And... Uh, uh, I had this big old smile on my face. I was like, I missed you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad if, uh, I took that we, break. If we didn't, I mean, it was like almost two years at this point. We do that Marvel rewatch thing. I'd be like, yeah. I could watch those movies again. But if I'm being honest, I watched those movies way too effing much in my life. So I am <laughs> happy to have a nice little break. And that WandaVision's here. I'm like, oh, yeah, my friends are back. Yeah, it's exactly. Nice. Because yeah. I haven't seen a Marvel movie since Spider-Man: Far From Home in theaters. When I watched mm. another movie in theaters, that was it. I didn't watch another Marvel movie until just gotcha. today. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It's, so it's nice, uh, nice uh, uh, strength. I didn't have that strength. Yeah. I mean, like, we talked about it. We talked about it. Like I was, I had the Marvel fatigue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I didn't technically rewatch it, but I listened to it because I have Disney Plus on my phone, and there are times where I'm at work, I just get so bored, I need to listen to stuff. So I decided to listen to Avengers Endgame, and yeah. I mean, it helped. It's nice, but it's okay. still it's it's not the same. You as just actually. Read, listen to like an audio book or something, Ben. That seems like way better use of time. Yeah. If I'm being honest, but you do you, baby. Yeah. But let's get right into uh, Wandavision. Uh, what do we think of Wandavision? I love I love Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> ben. Uh... Yeah, we're getting to some weird territory. I'm for it. Give me something different. I like it. Sparks? Uh, I'm down for the closest that the MCU is ever going to get to Twin Peaks. Oh. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I, man, um, this show is, I mean, it's made for millions of people, but I kind of feel like it was made for me because, man, there's just some scenes where it's like, man, it's the 1950s, and then serious, serious dread for about three seconds happens, and then it's back to smiles, and everyone's like, excuse me, can we talk about this? But no, they can't talk about it because what the hell's going on? Um, I, I love this thing, you guys. Mm-hmm. And the more time goes on, the more the more little details people are finding out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this show, this show is like, it, it's it's next level. And not in terms of, you know, like changing the medium, but for, for Marvel, 
they are stepping it up in a serious way. I cannot believe I watched a four by three I Love Lucy Marvel million dollar show. That is that that blows my mind still. You Just, tweeted, you tweeted, sorry, you liked the tweet where it's like someone noticed that their wallpaper in the second episode is the is the Strucker Castle in Sokovia. Yeah. Ben, did you see that? No. What? So at the end of the episode, when when the black and white is turning in the color, the wallpaper flickers and it's the castle from Age of Ultron where the where where they were kept. Yeah. Which is gonna lead into every theory we're gonna talk about for the next 17 hours because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> No, because my roommate and one of his friends, um, they're watching WandaVision right now. I mean, if you can hear the music, that's what it's for. That's uh, it, they just finished the watching the second episode of WandaVision. Because yeah. I was, oh, man, I I was like kind of watching this, or I was because when they were watching the first episode, I was I was downstairs having a snack and I was kind of watching it too. I was like, man, this just even watching the first episode with it being completely I love Lucy. Because my first thought with Fanny the other night, she was like. What the hell is going on? Why is it I love Lucy? I'm just sitting there going, oh, I think I know what's happening. Well, I think if we, if it, obviously the main theory and what is probably likely is that Wanda is somehow in control of this world. She has created yeah. it in some way. Um, after after the second episode, that's now I what I believe. Yeah, uh, same. Uh, but I, yeah. I don't think it's a conscious thing. I don't think she's aware that she's controlling the world. I think I there's. Think- a lot of factors in play that we haven't seen yet too. Uh, yeah. I mean, do, do we want to get into theories now or do we want to wait? Well, no, let's, let's break down yeah, the episode. Right. Let's okay, break yeah. down the first episode. The first okay. episode was filmed in front of a live studio audience. I loved it. I adored it. The beautiful cheating out set. That's perfectly open oh. for the audience to watch them on a stage. I mean, loved it. You know, I, cause I thought it was a laugh track and people said it was shot in front of a live studio audience. And I'm actually really happy. It was shot in front of the live. Studio I saw the, audience. So there's a behind the scenes footage that dropped the day after WandaVision dropped, and uh, uh, they show a bit of the filming of that episode, the first episode oh, that's, specifically. That's awesome. Um, I want to know what that audience was told prior to walking into that studio. Yeah. I want to know how long the audience had to sit there when when Paul <laughs> Bettany goes oh, and changes his face into vision. And like, Hold on, guys, we got three wait. hours. Three hours for him to get out of makeup. <laughs> Everybody go to lunch. I'm thinking of like. Those people have had to sit on this on this beautiful beautiful like couple hours I got to spend watching this thing that won't come out for three years or whatever, right? Yeah, like they had to sign an NDA of like, yo, I saw an episode of Wandavision. When's that thing coming out? <laughs> <laughs> not only that, not only that, like having been the live studio audience for the first episode of Wandavision, you're the only people that will get to ever see it in color. Oh yeah, oh, yes. yeah. true yeah. man. That is that's actually a very good point because the first two episodes. Um, they're they're all in black and white and with the the first episode being the one that's completely black and white there's no color except for the very ending scene when we pull out of the tv world and then there are bits of uh, like the roadcaster pro right there (laughs) that's a roadcaster pro yeah the lady has got the it's a lady hand i think but like the sword thing at the end it's a roadcaster in the first in the first episode the other bit of color the only other bit is the commercial in the middle which has the red light on the, the toaster on the star right. toaster. Yes. Right. the red light with the toaster yes. man which oh, is a callback to, which is a callback to age of ultron tony yeah. so so these these two memories these two these two things are tied to the people that that have hurt wanda the most it's tony stark when she's trapped under that bomb waiting for it to explode like the toaster and baron von strucker Who's the guy who basically that's like? Why the, that's why the watch is stronger. Oh, but that's oh. why the watch is stronger. But I wonder if you noticed that's why the 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 the, the toaster was beeping like that. I had it's, it's, it's meant to be a bomb. And oh, it kept shit. beeping, and the girl got a little like weird it's, about it. It's yeah. like the story that they tell yeah. about how they were sitting waiting for Tony Stark to kill them when they were kids. Yeah, dude. Oh, oh and again, I, I, I. This is a weird show. I there are definitely I've seen regular people going. I don't know if this one's for me. Um, I like I like the stuff when it goes out, but like the actual structure, I'm I'm not sure with. I think that's one. If you just don't like the type of show that these are, uh, or two, you're just I, I I don't know what it is because like I a lot of people like this. Like I don't I don't like uh, sitcoms. Like I grew up watching them, like a uh, Nick and Knight and shit. But like I haven't watched an actual sitcom in a decade, right? Um, but this this I think because of what's happening, it didn't matter that it was a sitcom because I know it's all like a farce. Like yeah. this is a fake reality that they're playing. And when, when it goes from again, being like the fifties and then like, it does like a zoom in shot, which is not from the fifties. And like, is this real? And I'm like, Oh, it know, totally changes. Like the yeah. camera angle. It's no longer yeah. the three camera setup. It's, it's, it's the, individual. this is, it's, 
the show is so smart in the way that it's filmed. And again, the more I think about it, I'm like, there is not every detail was thought of and every detail was meticulous, meticulously thought of, of like, yo, there, someone's going to catch on to that thing. And no. I'm like, you're right. So now that you told me, I just told Fanny that there are connections to WandaVision that you, that now I realize that you just told me that I cannot wait to tell her about. Cause I did catch the toaster, the blinking toaster. Um, I was like, hmm, that's, I was, cause you're right. I was, I was like, hmm, that is weird. And then, uh, um, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like the, okay. So, the toaster, <clears throat> so the toaster was blinking and I did not realize I completely forgot that, um, Oh, I'm back. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you lag out for a second, Brandon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So uh, what was I talking about? Yeah. The toaster. Because I completely forgot that Wanda and her brother were stuck under the rubble and there was a bomb with Stark Industries on it and it was just beeping red and it never went off. And then the Strucker watch, I was just like, all right, well, they're probably... Because I thought those were just like tiny little Easter eggs or something. I didn't realize that was part of Wanda's psyche and what was going on. So the next one would be Ultron. Next one probably yeah. will be Ultron. I'm actually looking yeah. for Google. Uh, man, you guys, like I... Uh... I I fully expect Ultron to be in the show at this point. I expect James Bader to show up. I James Bader do. doesn't show I up. Um, not just because Paul Bettany is teasing I the hell. Say, you know what I'll say? <laughs> I don't think Ultron shows up necessarily, but James Bader shows up. That's I why I said. That's why I said specifically James Bader. I don't yeah. think Ultron. I think James Bader. Yeah. I uh. Yeah, because like, so we're bouncing all over the place, but like episode two, and it, like she's pregnant, right? So like we're getting those kids and those kids are real characters in the Marvel universe. That's big setup, maybe, who knows? But like Ultron, like he is the dad, he is the uncle, he is part of the family. And like, I just don't see how you make a vision show without that being there, especially here's, when it's about family. Here's the thing. One of these episodes is going to tie into Full House. I what is full? What is Full House about? It is about a large family taking care of the kids. Oh, he's, gonna, yeah. he's gonna show up as as Vision's father. Yes, yeah, he is. Father, he's yeah. gonna be like, ah, oh, the kiddo is <laughs> gonna be like, oh, this is weird. Yeah, I'm just waiting. <laughs> like, like, like. You're right. Ever since Paul Bettany dropped the, there's still a big surprise guest. Ooh, uh, oh. that's definitely. It's very much like now, oh, it's kind of James I think Spade. I want to rewind a bit and talk about about. Um, there's a lot of people there. There, I'm sure there are a lot of people saying it's not for me. Here's here's the thing. If you're an MCU stan, I'm going to use the word stan. I don't like it, but I'm going to use it. Like we are. I think. Like a super it, fan, yeah. yeah, I think if you are us, you are already on board for what this show is because mm -hmm. not only are you interested in the MCU no matter what, but you're also you're also hoping for something different from the MCU, and this is both. Well, this is a this is a tiny conversation that Ryan and I had where Ryan's like, this might just be too weird. Like this might just be too genre out there. I saw it on for some audience people. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but if the MCU's got you by the balls, it doesn't matter. That's yeah. what I thought. And the second episode, uh specifically one person who loves the MCU, but just like didn't like the first episode. And the second episode's like, okay, now that I see where they're going, I'm more into it, but I just don't like the format of the show. And I think mm -hmm. that's because they're used to the MCU being away, and I'm just like that's that's and that's that's Marvel slowly beating that away from I think, you, so you get used to weird shit. I more. think I think just too many people less less entrenched in weird genre television. Mm -hmm. Too many people came to what the MCU was offering with WandaVision, expecting like the opening to be like the ease in, like we see what happens to Wanda that puts her into this yeah. place first. Right. You get mm -hmm. your your MCU establishment. They didn't expect to just a the beat. episode to start. Yeah. And it's a 50s television show. And it's a mystery. Immediately. And they have no idea what's happening. And I just don't think that they were engaged with that being the concept right from the gate. Even yeah. if they were expecting, oh, at some weird point, they're going to do like a 50s thing. Fun. Um, and I think that's where they get, they get thrown off. The... But like to people who watch things like twin peaks or most hbo television at yeah. this point are like prestige no shows. yeah absolutely legion uh, legion yeah right um, prestige television of any kind uh the performances mm -hmm. uh like they're they're all putting on like these you know these old school like big theatrics but they are so charming mm -hmm. paul bettany has unfortunately he's really good as a emotionless robot but he's been a robot for like a decade you know it's nice for him because he's an actor to just be drunk as a magician but also he's a robot and like Holy shit, man. Like, it's everything works. Like, Elizabeth Olsen is so charming. I being, love... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Not, like, Paul Bettany, at the very end of the first episode, or... No, okay, not the very end. 
But when he comes in, comes home, and he sees Wanda in that outfit, he's like, "What are you wearing? What are, what you, are you wearing?" <laughs> yeah, yeah I love him like trying to play the fluster. It's very, it was very Ricky Ricardo and I Love Lucy, and mm-hmm. uh, all right, I got those vibes from that episode. And then when he's like, "Oh my, I forgot to tell you, it's Sokovian. My wife's from Europe. I forgot to say that." There's or, so many great lines that Paul Bettany has where he's like, "It's so so Covian." <laughs> Right. And the, way, the way that they brought up Sokovia, and I'm like, I, I don't know why, but up to that point in my brain, I just didn't expect direct references to things like that. Yeah. Not like you know, the wider MCU as a whole, but like in the in the sitcom setting, I didn't expect them to do things like talk about the fact that she was Sokovian and yeah. from out of the country and that kind of thing. And when they did that, I'm like, damn, this is still just the characters. And that's yeah. really mm-hmm. nice. Like You kind of expect it to like, farcibly sent set up that she's like all American girl kind of thing. And that, that mentality got broken for me in that moment. And I didn't expect it. Uh, Definitely because this is a series where uh, her first movie, she has an accent and now she doesn't have an accent, uh, which they could, they could steer away from, from like her origin of being Sokovian. And yeah, they're, they're leaning into it, which is great. Which again, seeing that, seeing that castle again, I'm like, yo, this is hydra shit. Since you brought up the, the accent, I did watch a, uh, uh, an, an interview with Elizabeth Olsen and she said the accent's not gone. There's a reason why she doesn't have it right now and she didn't have it in the last movie. Um, so I think that th- by the end of this, I think the idea is that because she is an all-American girl in the sitcom, she's not yeah. meant to be, she's not meant to be Sokovian uh, European. Yeah. She is she is like a Lucille Ball. I think when we get to like the real world, whatever that looks like, she'll have the accent again. We'll, well see, because Infinity War and Endgame, she's got no accent. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, I think, I think it's just Well, great. I was going to say that that accent has been significantly less since Civil War. Yeah. It's kind of there in Civil War, but it comes and goes, let's be honest. Well, because they... Well, what I was saying, what I, what I noticed with the with the interview is that I think she has a passion for keeping the accent, and I don't think the Russos did. And we talked yeah. a little bit. We talked a lot about how the Russos, uh, how they influenced the MCU when they took over Civil War and then Infinity War and Endgame. One mm-hmm. of them being Vision became this more emotionless than he was in Age of Ultron, um, which wasn't that far of a leap, but it was there. Um, no, you and I, uh, because you're bringing it up, I, I just wanted to say that you and I had a conversation on our own, Brandon, after we'd watched WandaVision about um, the, I, I'm, this isn't like an overall comment on those movies. Like the Russos did a good job. This is more about um, the, the two screenwriters. I don't think they wrote a good vision. Like Mm -hmm. uh, overall, I just don't think that they ever gave a crap about what the character said necessarily. It was just about what he could do. Uh, That character was, was not giving Paul Bettany a lot of room to engage, which was always hard because infinity war, for one scene is basically where you're supposed to believe the Wanda and vision romance is. Mm -hmm. And that was a hard, hard, hard sell uh, that I bought into because I wanted to, not because Mm -hmm. I believed it. Uh, Um, And the show is doing leaps and bounds to improve it. And it is so nice to, because you guys brought up Paul Bettany earlier. So nice to let him get to be more expressive, even when he's not being like super comedic and everything. These are still things that you can feel like, Vision can say this. Yeah. yeah. Like Vision can say these things and have this kind of fun. And he was just so rigid. Uh because in the like, Russo interpretation. Again, like these are two people who <clears throat> are in a who are in some type of fake reality performing. Mm-hmm. Like Vision, again, Vision also breaks character and like just goes back to saying, like, yes, this is real, darling. Like his normal vision voice. So like these guys mm-hmm. are acting, they want to be in this world. We just um, don't realize that we think it's like they're prisoners, but actually, like they might be their own captives, which is I, so cool. But one of the things I noticed specifically to just go back around to what the accent is, I think she, I think Elizabeth Olsen specifically has a lot more creative control of the show than, than, um, than, than she would have normally with like mm-hmm. when she was in the music of these movies. One of the things specifically that, that tells me that it, not just the accent uh, discussion that I, that I saw today, but the poster for this move for the show movie uh, for the show has a hint of a new uniform that no longer has the cleavage. One of the things that she really hated about her costume is that she had the cleavage. She was the only character in the MCU that did. I think she had some control in this show. And I like that. I, I like that she's taking kind of the reins of her character being like, this is what I want this character to be. You know what? Yeah. I actually do remember seeing the, because po- it's the, po- the poster you're talking about is with them. It's all the TVs. Yeah, with all the TVs. Because I do yeah. remember seeing Vision's costume and then Scarlet Witch's costume is like, that's a different Scarlet Witch costume from my from what I remember. Is like, yeah. Oh, of course, he's getting a new costume. That's right. They specifically <laughs> show like the the torso of that costume in one in one TV, and it is it is a full 
uh, as a full dress uniform nice. or whatever. Um, we're going back to Vision, though, I, I do want to kind of bounce off of that and say that uh, one of my favorite things about Vision is that when he's working in the first episode, and he's like, what exactly do we do here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, like the mystery of the show um, is what is kind of what's so fun about it, because neither of these neither of these characters really kind of know what's going on. But like, it's not super important. Like, oh, what's today's date? Oh, I guess we'll figure it out. Right. Uh, like <laughs> them getting just they getting a uh, cross up about what the day is, Mr. Hart and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's all super charming. Like the sitcom. If this were a real sitcom, I think it actually works. I think the writing is strong. I think it's actually funny. Uh, I think it represents the time period very well. Catherine Hahn. Oh my God, you guys, I love Catherine Hahn. She's in my favorite comedy, Step Brothers, and she's the reason that movie's insane. Catherine Hahn's one of the funniest people on the planet. She is shining in the show. What a gas. Oh my mm, God. I, I love, love her. her. Um, Catherine Hahn's extreme. Um, I, I think it's the the second the second mm. episode has Dottie, but there's a scene where, uh, where they're talking about like, oh, should I have changed my clothes? And she's like, oh, well, it's too past that. It's, it's too late for that. She's like, and Wanda's like, maybe I'll just be more of myself. And she just goes like, <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, that's the kind of scary shit that I'm looking for. Like, it was like two seconds of like a frown and then well, re return a character. It's remember so Monica, when Monica introduces herself, she's like, I'm Geraldine. Geraldine. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is an interesting way to have Monica Rambo reintroduced into the into the MCU. So here's what I think, because we're if we're just gonna talk about Monica. Um, we know there's outside interference. There's people trying to figure out what's happening. There is some type of whether we hear, it's like an <laughs> we hear Jimmy Woo over the radio. Yeah, yeah. There, whether it's like an annihilation bubble that they cannot get into, like of the movie Annihilation from yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. which they can't get into, which I, I think that's the case. They can't get in. I think Monica got in, and when once you're in, your brain's fried and you're put into this reality. I, I think there are a bunch of characters that have not been established that are that are <laughs> in this thing, like, and we don't know who they are yet. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. In fact, I, I'm I'm eighty percent into the direction that a decent chunk of the town is people, yeah. real people. I think this who is, have been contorted into I think it. this is a real town that that Wanda went to go do an experiment on and whether it went wrong. I or... wouldn't even go that far. I would say that I wouldn't be surprised if this was like a shield site. Oh, or not yeah. a shield site necessarily, but like a sword the, site. The, well, whatever whatever post end game. Avengers activity Scarlet Witch was going to be part of. Yeah. Whoever she was around at that point who was working for it, mm -hmm. they're all in it. Yeah. Because I I I don't think that I don't think they've been in there long. Yeah. So I think that they were able to find out this was happening pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So I do think that a lot of the people that we're seeing, like Hart, the boss, all those kind of people, they're they're people who work for Sword or Shield or yeah. you know whatever whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, got sucked in. At least a decent chunk of the town's yeah. people are that. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> um, um, there's a, there's a um, there's an event that happened before Secret Empire. It was called uh, Battle for Pleasant Hill. Um, I remember and I that. don't think. That's I don't think what that's what this is, but in small parts. But that is a that is a community of all supervillains who were brainwashed by Shield into becoming good people. So you had a bunch of like Spider Man villains and Iron Man villains mm -hmm. living as regular folk, not knowing that they were villains. And Shield did some really shady shit. Yeah, yeah. So it could be an incorporation of that, and then what's going on with House of M stuff with Wanda wanting this reality to be real, and then some other influences see what's happening and they work their way in and mess all this up. Um, well, and there's the big question of how is Vision alive? I think so. I, another, mm, mm, yeah. Go I don't think I think Vision is just a manifestation of Wanda's will. So <clears throat> my my whole theory is that um, Wanda. So like maybe she did. So after Endgame, she went to go do something, and then just something happened, and she and her she's losing control over. So she's in control, but at the same time, she's not in control. Because yeah. we see at the end of the second episode when the beekeeper comes out and she goes, no, rewinds it, and then huzzah, she's pregnant. Mazel tov. I don't think I don't think she's con she's she was uh I don't think she was um conscious consciously aware of the fact that she did that. Yeah. Uh I so <clears throat> if I were to conceptualize what Wanda's doing in those mm -hmm. moments, um like that one, or when she pushes back against Jimmy Woo trying to get through on the radio mm -hmm. or the stop it moment, the helicopter, all of those things. Uh, are like her trying to be woken up from a dream she wants to stay in. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so I do I do think she is aware to an extent yeah. that she is doing something to stay in the dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's aware 
really of what that means in the larger sense of the world. I but I do think yeah. she understands uh, that, that uh, uh, what's it called? Yes. Um, I'm a lucid dreamer, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm in a good dream and I want to stay in a place, I insert myself in the dream and I can take control for a moment. If you take too much control in the dream, this is real. This is something that, that you can do if you lucid dream. Mm -hmm. If you take too much control of the dream, you wake up. Oh, I've done that. That's I mean, happened really you can only guide things up to an extent, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a lot like what this is. It's like lucid dreaming. Um, um, but to go to what Ben said about vision being a manifestation, I do think he's alive. I don't know how. I do think he's alive, but he's being controlled by whatever is controlling the rest of the town. Okay, uh, so... You, you give your two cents. Okay, so sword. Um, sure. We see sword. Sword is is in the show in some capacity. We see a helicopter that's in that's in color. I think that's a crashed helicopter mm -hmm. that landed yes. in a town. The that's a rep that, that's a representation of of, some, of a little toy. That's a real helicopter. And we see sword. the we see the it on, we see the logo on a screen uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the first episode. It's yes. on the notebook. Uh, in the first yeah. episode. The sword too. logo is also on the back of the of the of the B man, which I'll talk about in the second episode because that's spicy shit, you guys. Um, I think oh oh, and that's gone. I'll come back to it. Um, I don't think Vision is fake. There we go. Uh, because Vision has been shown to have an amount of agency that I do not think. Again, I don't think is Wanda enforcing it on him. So if it's not Wanda, I don't think it's whatever else is affecting Wanda either. Like whatever Catherine Hahn represents necessarily. I don't think those things are enforcing what Vision does. Vision seems to be an entity all to himself. I the it other up. reason why I'll say that I think Vision is real is twofold. If the, chi if the kids are going to be real and stick in the MCU, which everyone expects they will, it means nothing if Vision wasn't real too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. So uh, the and the other reason is because this this is a love story that means less if Vision is fake, and I think it is meant to be embellishing Vision as a character as well. Yeah, and I don't expect them to <laughs> kill him off after they killed him off. Yeah, and here's the key well, here's oh, the key scene. But uh, here's the key scene uh, that Brandon brought up earlier when he's at his job and he doesn't know what he does. Yeah, that implies that he is a character of his own will. Mm -hmm. who is unfamiliar with his setting. Not Wanda making him know things, because if he was something like anyone else in the town, he wouldn't think about it. Absolutely. Uh, so well, I, because, I, I, else, because nobody else does. Yeah, because yeah. my, my whole question is, my whole question is, is how do they bring Vision back? Well, we'll find out. But, but I, don't want, I don't want Ryan to lose, what, to lose his thought again. So, okay. Ryan. So, Sword. Sword, um, Sword has a different um, anagram, anagram, analogy. What's the... What's the anagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anagram. Yeah. So in the comics, it's sentient world observation. In the MCU, it's sentient weapon, weapon observation. Oh. So I think they brought Vision back to life. Sword did just the android form, and then and then we'll get into episode two, uh, uh, like what I think is actually happening in the show. But Wanda and Vision went to Sword for whatever reason. We'll find out why. And they got put into like a little <laughs> area for Wanda to do what she needs to do to get better. Outside forces come in to screw all this up, and now Sword ha is blocked out as well. Um, kind of piggybacking off what Ryan's saying, it's very important to remember that in Infinity War, we don't actually know how close Shuri got to finishing Vision it's true. before it's true. it got interrupted. I We know it was above 90%, though. So mm -hmm. that would imply that they might have enough that they could put Vision back together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Creed, get, craft him a new body. And it's an important detail that it very clearly doesn't look like it's the stone in his head when it goes to color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we do just, see a manifestation of the stone. Uh, we do see like the symbol of the stone on the, on the, on the cabinet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. But the, the thing on his head looks more colorless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like the stone. It just looks like a, a thing there because that's what he looked like. Before. It's what we speculated when Endgame was coming out. Like, you know, they could repair Vision that way because, you know, if Shuri wasn't, if Shuri they didn't did, get snapped. They, they yeah. built it that way. They built it that way for, for it to say, like, Vision can be, like, Bruce Banner has that whole thing where he says there's so many other things that make vision besides the stone we could probably remove the stone and still keep all those things and that's what shuri was working on yeah, yeah. i Absolutely. would assume there's enough there to have had sword let's say yeah. have brought all that technology over and tried to reconstruct vision for wanda 
after the events of Endgame. And so now Ben could also be correct in saying that perhaps they they may uh, may have created just a husk of Vision, and it was Wanda that put in that like activated the personality. Absolutely, and that's how we get the White Vision from the comics too. Maybe uh, there you right. go. Uh, e- either way, I I don't think Vision is fake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, my because my whole thing was that. Wanda, okay, so my thing deal was that Vision will eventually come back. I mean, he asked, I feel like he has to, but that in these episodes, especially the first two, that version of Vision was just what Wanda remembers. So I watched the trailer and he's in like the whole thing, I think. Then, <laughs> well, I know he's I, okay. Um, so I, well, I, I, I think it takes away, it takes away. Um, stuff from the character and the weight of what ha- already happened to Vision. If you're just gonna not have him be real, I think. Well, I, th- I think there's that also he is to, impactful. To kind of like talk about what you're uh, what you're speculating, Ben. Um, there is a there is kind of ample evidence to think in the first episode that Wanda is also controlling Vision. Maybe maybe, maybe she doesn't know uh, that she is, and and perhaps not even that much. But he doesn't help the boss until Wanda no. says to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a big deal because why doesn't he just do it? But Wanda yeah. is clearly like not in her right mind in this in that mm-hmm. moment. Because, but and he's like, I I don't. He's almost kind of like stuck. He's like, what like, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, because go ahead. Once again, these are only the first two episodes. We still have a whole lot more questions to be asked. There's gonna be six more episodes, so we're probably gonna get, we're gonna get our answers, which eight makes me happy. We're, we're ham- oh, eight more episodes? Because I thought it was eight in total. No, seven more no. episodes. Oh, it's a, yeah. it's nine episodes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a weird nine. It's yeah. it's weird. It's yeah. a, they're all going to be about six hours long, is what the rest of it. Well, said, yeah, yeah. But because these are only the first two episodes, so of course it's just the like it's the little carrot. It's like, hey, you remember the thing, but there's more. There's more secrets to be unraveled. So I'm, I'm glad that this is the first thing that the MCU dropped because uh, I, I think it's kind of refreshing in a way. Yeah. You're dipping yourself back into the MCU, and it's also something different that you've never seen before. The MCU do. Yeah. Uh, let's dive into the second episode a little bit more deeply. Uh, just, just because mm-hmm. you brought that up real quick, I think that is more like when they conceptualized it for releases. They thought Falcon and Winter Soldier would ease those fans in. Yeah, because it'd be that MCU thing. Now we're be like, oh yeah, shows. That's the, cool. Step on the pedal. And then, and then Wandavision, they just they'd be extra sold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I agree with you. Like, I have no problem with it this way, but I, I don't have a problem with weird shit. Yeah. The second episode, yeah, they figure out how to get Vision drunk. So, uh, Bewitched, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a there's the Bewitched, like, opening credit scene, which is mm-hmm. gorgeous and hilarious and beautiful. There are some Easter eggs from the comic that I'm not going to mention because, one, it, uh, it I, I want you guys to read Vision as soon as you possibly can. Uh, second, if it relates to the show, I don't want to have that spoiled for you yet either, but there's stuff in that opening credits in that credit scene. That's like, Oh, there's some really dark shit that you guys just aren't. If you haven't read the comic, you don't know. So that makes me really excited. Um, again, like every, there's only two episodes, but these two episodes are so, so chock filled of these tiny little references that could mean something, could not mean something. It's just, it's just fun to talk about. I mean, it's a, it's a speculation. It's a speculation thing that the MCU never really had before a weekly television series like this, where yeah. uh, we talked about with the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian being a weekly schedule really helped to kind of be like, what's going to happen next. And you're talking about the speculations. Like you said, Ryan, I noticed those things too. Uh, they could mean something, but they could also not. And the fun thing is, is to speculate whether or not they could. They could just be references, right? They could just be Easter eggs. But to have that kind of like weekly thing, because I know people are bitching about the weekly schedule, but to have that weekly thing and to be able to talk about it and and speculate that that's that's what makes it fun. And the MCU never really had had it to this scale before. Yeah, absolutely. Believe me, I would rather have the slow drip of MCU content for the next five months <laughs> through all these shows than. St- like us have to like bang out let me tell all you all the hours of yes. wandavision to talk about it next week yeah the day wandavision came out i would have watched all 10 episodes and i would not have i uh, have like dissected as much and like gone into the mysteries and it would not have been a fun because the mystery would have been <laughs> solved the same night um it's it's certain shows are worth binge watching and then certain shows are worth the mystery of waiting yes. it's a, it's like a, it's the comics method really like it's, mm-hmm. it's waiting is sometimes good that's why, you know, that's why we talk about Mandalorian. Like, we wouldn't have gotten an episode like we did or in our second episode, uh, second to last episode of Mandalorian, but we're just talking about Star Wars politics if the Mandalorian just came out all at once. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, 
Second episode. Um, so uh, Agnes, um, who I who I in the internet is pretty much confirmed. I, everyone thinks she's Agatha Harkness, who is a witch who trained Wanda from the comics. Um, it just seems weird that there'd be a character named Agnes in the show who was like a, a second fiddle to her. It just it's probably that character, which is really cool. She gives her a, a, a plant, which is a, something from the comics. Again, it can mean nothing. It can mean everything. Who knows? Um, Catherine Hahn rules. I think she knows what's going on. She's like, look, it's a star of the show. I think I think there's some nefarious shit happening for the children. Are they just trying to get this woman pregnant and steal their her mutant babies? Like, what's going on, guys? I, it's, it's all sinister, and I love it. Yeah. Well, I, I do like... like... Sorry, go ahead, Ben. When they started going for the children, I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, there, yeah, there is a... There is a... Uh, uh, a cynicism to the to how the town reacts to uh, uh, Buffy, uh, the, the genie from Buffy. Emma Coffee. Anya. Yeah. Anya, yeah. Dottie. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I really like uh, the second episode because it's not filmed in front of a live studio audience and the set is different, um, uh, which, is, which is a little weird, but uh, but kind of fun. Also kind of creates the, uh, the the discombobulation that you have watching the show. Yeah, it's in it's in more of a uh, the first episode is a Dick Van Dyke style and the second episode is more of a Leave it to Beaver slash Twilight Zone style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending on which scene it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially the helicopter was definitely Twilight Zone vibes. I just, One I just hundred percent. I just love Paul Bettany so much. He has been a comedic genius this whole time, and nobody has ever used this. Excuse me, have you not seen a Knight's Tale? A Knight's Tale is great, oh, yeah, but he's he was, not. He is not nearly as unhinged. He is not nearly as unhinged as he is in this. I for no, don't forget that okay. Paul Bettany is Sir Jeffrey Chaucer in a Knight's Tale. Hey, Knight's Tale is a great movie. I'm not no, dogging I mean, Night's Tale. Oh no, I need to, that means I need to rewatch Night's Tale because it's been a very long time. Yeah, it's an awesome movie. Um, it up. You wanna, uh, uh, go to the uh, neighborhood watch meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, oh wait, we're gonna talk about the guy with the long face with the mustache. He got fired in the first episode. <laughs> so he's a great piano player. Like that's my, my, grandma. my wife thought like, five courses would be enough. Uh, <laughs> this second episode. Both these episodes are really funny. The second episode just has these little comedic moments. That <laughs> full of it. I'm just like, I love it. Uh, yeah, man. I just, I just like, I just love the show so much. I, I, didn't uh, I didn't. The first time I watched it, I'm glad I watched it the second time. Because uh, the first, the first time I watched it, I watched it at midnight, which I was dead tired. So I shouldn't have done that. Um, mm -hmm. But the second time I watched it, I caught on that that was uh, Randall Park over the radio trying to call oh. in for Wanda. I didn't catch that the first time. Oh, I caught um, the first time. I was like, I oh, I don't know what that is. I think, and I don't know if this is true, but I think that the that the song "Help Me Rhonda" changes one lyric to "Help Me Wanda" for a second. I don't know if that's true, but I would be really be really cool. If that's true. It'd just be like it's it's like doubling up, so it just sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be. Um, uh, Dottie. Yeah, like that's again just such a fun character, like one of those archetypal like mm -hmm. trophy ladies, who, like runs runs like the housewives, but like she like. She breaks character for a second too, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know who I'm supposed to trust or not anymore. Mm -hmm. Like everyone is like in on it or not in on it, and like, well, that's that's what that's what goes to Sparks's thing about how like these people could be like sword agents or something, and Wanda yeah. is unconsciously uh, making them be in this sitcom scenario, and so that's them trying to wake up is the moments that they, they like freak out. I saw Somebody said, yo, what if Dottie's Abigail Brand? And that's why she's such a bitch. And I'm like, you can't do that to me. You can't <laughs> put names out like that. Because the sword's out, that comic's out, and Abigail Brand's the dopest lady. And I'm like, you can't just do that to me. You can't. Not everybody is not everything is 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 a thing. Yeah. Um, not everything has is, to be a thing, exactly. This is the first time that we see Monica Rambo. Uh and yeah, and, yeah. and the 2023 Monica Great. Rambo. 1960s, 2023, yeah. Because that's all I remember. This show takes place in 2023. Yeah. Uh, the, the if not if not 2024, who knows? Jeez Louise. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's a very weird way to have a character like that reintroduced. Uh, yes. That just like not even like because the thing is like we know that's Monica Rambeau. Most people don't. Yeah. Most, would... people, most people won't know for a while, and when they do, they're still gonna go who. And then they'll watch Captain Marvel again for some reason and go, oh, <laughs> the Captain the... Trouble. Yeah. yeah, I had to plant Fanny that that was um, Cap. That was who Monica was because I forgot yeah, her name. Captain Trouble. 
No. Well, I forgot that. Um, I was like, oh yeah, remember in Captain Marvel, um, uh, Marvel's best friend's daughter. She's like, yeah, that's her. I can't it, wait. I can't wait for Brie Larson to talk to an adult Monica Rambeau and say Captain Trouble. I'm so excited for that. Be cute. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, again, it is. It's such an interesting, interesting choice of characters that they're choosing. Like we know, we know Randall Park's in it. We know, we know Darcy's showing up. Um, geez, like who else is showing up? Like it's just so fun. Like sword and shield hanging out, being buds. Like we know Secret Invasion's happening, and like Sword's gonna be involved in that. Like they're, it's a, it's a full universe, baby. You can have your 1950s and your alien stuff in the same sword, show. It's crazy. Sword. I remember. I wasn't. I wasn't. Um expecting it but then i remembered that we saw um behind the scenes pictures before quarantine before when there was when they started filming and people had the sword logo there were Mm -hmm. a set photos of falcon with a soldier where um uh blonde haired girl carter shit sharon carter in camp yeah 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 she has a sword logo uniform on so like swords here baby Sword is the new shield well shield is over effective as of uh season five of agents so yeah, yeah that's true yeah. I, I want to say i wouldn't be surprised yeah if, <laughs> if they just like sword just becomes like yo we we are the new shield but we also protect outer space we just absorb shield um yeah i mean um, the spider-man far from home uh post credit scene does kind of tie into that um yeah uh, we're, we'll see that paid off in secret and secret uh secret invasion in some way um oh let's talk about the b-man real quick um, yeah talk about yeah, the B-Man. i want to know so, so the b-man know. The B-Man is a, uh, well, we don't know if this is who it is, but the only B-Man that are associated with Hydra, there's a villain called Swarm, who is a B-Man who works for Hydra. Mm-hmm. Um, Hydra, I think, is is trying to, I think there's a bunch of different influences trying to get Wanda, because she's like the most powerful person on the planet, right? She can reality warp like, sh- like crazy. Um, there's a great line um, about the devils in the details, but that's not the only place he is. That makes me think of Mephisto, because it's relating directly to Doctor Strange, and I'm like, that could be, there could be so many influences. Um, but the B-Man, I think, I think, I think the B-Man is a Hydra spy working in S.H.I.E.L.D. or in, in S.W.O.R.D. He was able to get in. He's trying to work his way and he's using his B-Powers and Wanda's like, I don't want to see this. I don't think S.W.O.R.D. knows it, but like, he's a B-Man. He's not a good guy. It could also be that um, he, he might not be Hydra in the show, in the, in the, in the show, in the MCU, because Hydra's not around anymore, but he, yeah. he could also just be a bad guy. Yeah, he could just be a bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just think I think he is a, he is in uh, uh what's it called? Like in what's it called? Injecting himself? He's a spy. Whatever it's called. He's a spy. Um, Inserting himself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's not many B characters in the Marvel universe. So like it's just like people are like, oh well, it, it's him or it's for no reason bees. <laughs> yeah. Because when he came out of the sewer, I was like, B? It's like, why is this dude, yeah. this random dude wearing a beekeeping uniform? And he looks all menacing. It's you know like, what? You know what? That what that didn't even it didn't even register on my weirdar for this for the show because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you're already in a sitcom scenario. Dude, a B shows up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't I, I don't know what to expect. It's like that Cards Against Humanity card where it goes bees. It's not even that. It's not even that because as a question, I'm just like, okay, bees. Cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even I'm not even convinced entirely that it's not just a red herring. Yeah, entirely where that's just like a person in in what would be like a hazmat suit but ultimately being reconceptualized to try to fit into the town it could be yeah maybe. showed up in a bad moment maybe i mean like anything it, yeah anything can go and i i didn't i didn't immediately jump to this is this is my point being i don't 100% believe that one for one the beekeeper means that I, they they're even related to bees like yeah. it's it, it could be anything again everything we're talking mm. about is just fun speculation here absolutely yeah. um that was but that was my my first instinct was like, I don't know well, because I know the B Man exists, so that's why my brain goes. If you guys don't know the B Man exists, you don't immediately go there. Every reference we made is because we read the comics. It, it doesn't have to mean everything. It doesn't have to mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see a Hydra. I see a Hydra trailer or a fake Hydra trailer, and then I see a character who works for Hydra. I'm just I, my brain goes places. That's all I'm saying. You see, yeah. uh, okay. I do enjoy those like those little mini commercials in between in, in the middle of the episode, like yeah. the the Tony Stark toaster. And uh, the Strutter watch, because when it, it first came up, it's like, a man has two things, his lovely lady and his Strutter. And his Strucker, Strucker. I don't know why I said Strutter. Strucker. I was like, and of course, it took me a while, and I'm not like, Strucker, why does the name sound from, so familiar? And I saw the Hydra thing. I'm like, oh, shit, Hydra dude. So it would be, so all, 
Well, let's 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 try to. Do you want to guess what the next couple of couple of commercials would be? It's uh, uh, definitely definitely Ultron's next. I want to say and, maybe it's it has something to do with Ultron because I want to say the next era of TV they're going into is the 1970s Brady Bunch. It doesn't matter. It, do, it clearly doesn't matter about the era. It, the, the commercials don't matter about the era. The commercials are there to remind the audience or just Wanda in general, she's actually watching them, um, of the people who hurt her the most. Yeah, I'm imagining okay. like Ultron is like the 1970s. Like, you know how computers used to be the size of rooms? And it's like, yeah. get your own personal computer. It's just a fucking huge Ultron face or something. Thanos oh, will be one of them, obviously, because he killed yeah. Vision. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. yeah, I'm. I love it. I'm all on be, board. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a commercial referencing her brother. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. In fact, now that I think about it, he's probably in the show. I wouldn't be surprised if her brother shows up in the show, at least for like Not a cameo. All. Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. Like, there's been like be behind the scenes stuff of like it doesn't. It could mean nothing, but like characters related to these. To these characters that haven't showed up, characters like Wonder Man, Vision is based off Wonder Man's brain. That's why the Vision in the comics he he is a robot Wonder Man. Um, there's a I, I posted on Twitter. There's a behind the scenes shot of the writer, and there's a picture of Wonder Man behind her in the writing room. And I'm not saying that matters. I'm just saying you don't put a picture of him up there. If it doesn't matter. Uh, so I just, saw that tweet of yours. Fun. And funny thing is, Ryan, I saw that tweet of yours. And when you said Wonder Man, I thought it was like you mean the gender bent Wonder Woman. No, uh, let's 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 let's. let's uh, let, I want to throw this out there. Okay, say say Wonder Man shows up in the show. Say he's one of the kooky uncles that shows up to take care of the kids. Do we think it's Nathan Fillion? Because as we know, he was cast as Wonder Man in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. He made he made movies in the eighties, man. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen, but like you absolutely you you of course you get Nathan Fillion in your show. Of course you do. Because <laughs> they've been trying. They've been trying to get that. I've been hoping that that would uh, resurface for years. I'd love it. Yeah. Uh, ever since I saw that, that like, they had to cut that stuff from the movie. I'm like, oh, man. What I love shame. those posters. He, he posted like high res versions of those posters like eventually. And I thought those were great. It's like ninja mime and stuff. I love it. Um, Yeah, man. Like, I, again, I am so thankful that it is it is the weekly model, even though we did two episodes. Like, I, I was I. Like end game is over three hours long. This episode is 22 minutes long. And when it ended, I'm like, oh, right. This is just a normal television show. Uh, of course, being the MCU, but I'm like, wow, that's the shortest MCU thing I've ever watched in my life. I can't believe it. Uh, I think I, it's, uh, it's cool doing this. Don't the Marvel one shots kind of beat it? I don't watch that. I, well, I've never, I've, I've maybe watched one of those. I don't know. <laughs> I like, but you know, I miss, I miss those. I'm yeah. Actually, oh yeah. There's, there's those the, were fun when they were doing them. I think I see yeah. the manor. That's about it. That's the, the 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 uh, the one with Coulson. The first the first one where he's trying. Anything happened on the way to Thor's hammer? No, not that one. The other one he did with Sitwell when they're in the diner. The consultant. The consultant. Yeah. The consultant. I like that one. Is that, yeah. is that about Tony Stark? I like. Yeah, it's uh, about how Tony ended up in the Incredible Hulk. Uh, that's, okay. that's what it's all about. Gotcha. Okay. And the, I like the other one, which is where he stops at a gas station and then messes up a robbery and leaves on his way to go to Thor's hammer. I love it. Yeah. Good job. There's <laughs> a, obviously the Agent Carter one spawned the TV series. Yeah. Um, anyway, but we're not here to talk about the Marvel one shots. Good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, Bradley Whitford was in that Agent Carter one shot. Yeah, he was. Look at that. Uh, yeah, man, like, I, I think, I, I think Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, I think that's going to be a great show, but I expect that to be a little more traditional for just from what I've seen and what it's about. Yeah. So, um, if I watched that first, I might've been a little worried about, about the future of the MCU and staying samey. But now that I've seen WandaVision and I know that they, they are capable and willing to just go effing bananas, uh, because really, like again, like this is the crazy. This is a mainstream Marvel property, and I, I, I'm still flabbergasted that it's real. Like it's so nuts. I'll tell you um, what it really does. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what it really does. It gives me a lot more faith in what they can do with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yo, man, Elizabeth Olsen's on that set saying cool things, and I'm like, oh, you, you don't do interviews, please. Like now that I know, now that I know that Kevin Feige was like, go weird. I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, Multiverse of Madness is gonna be weird. I'm excited yeah, um, about that. And like that stuff ties in like the Spider Man too. Like it just everything's kind of weaving together. Um, we'll see if it all works out or not. But like, yeah, man, so far so good. Yeah, weaving I agree. Web, wouldn't you say? Mm. Oh, 
Okay, Ben, you're fired. Uh, I don't mean to tell you this this way, but uh, <laughs> sorry, we can't do with this anymore. <laughs> so three, goodbye. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have a whole lot more to say. Um, I think we we there was some discussion whether or not we would do one a week. Uh, we would do one episode of this. Um, what do you guys feel? Do we want to do wait for another two, or do I, we want to do next week? I can't. I can't make that decision until we see the next one. Yeah, okay. because I I do think. Like being a com comic book people, like we could speculate and have fun and draw the length out, but I don't know if that's necessary for every episode. So I do yeah. think it is a we'll see what the next episode looks like. For for example, uh, like I I have a feeling at one point what will happen the way that the show now appears to be structured and based off what structured we've seen, uh, uh. what we've seen in the trailers, um, I imagine at some point Monica might get ejected from what's going on and we'll finally get the outside look uh -huh. of everything mm -hmm. so if that episode theoretically happened on a when we're not on week if we were doing two episodes i'd be like well we have to go on this week yeah so we're kind of gonna have to see what happens yeah. um they've also they've said um that a majority of the show this is what the show is but the last the last couple episodes are big action spectacles. That's where the budget went a lot of it. So like I fully expect those last couple episodes, or at least even just the last one, even to be vision blowing shit up, one of doing crazy stuff with robots, maybe. But like for eight episodes, I'm expecting just like sitcom shit. And yeah. I'm cool with it. Yeah. So um, it really depends on on how this plays out mm -hmm. uh for us to Let's make do. that call. Is there anything else I wanted to say about the magic show, which was which was a lot of fun. I love how he, I love how Vision gets drunk, uh, like drunk, because he's accidentally smells some gum and it messes up his gears. Yeah, Elizabeth Olsen is is great. I don't think that's how mirrors work. <laughs> and I love that that. Whole magic scene is so good. Is that how mirrors work? Yeah. Or uh, the, the the card the card trick is like okay, Sherbert, it's it's Hubert. Oh, is this your card? Is this your is this your card? Is this your card? Is it? Yeah. It's what what. what? It's my card. Well, let's take it. What? <laughs> like, you know? No, you did the trick right. What else I liked about the show is because, yes, it had to, but also what it showed is that the MCU sense of humor can change. Yeah. Yes. That tone of humor is no longer this one note consistent that's an MCU kind of joke. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's shifting now. Yeah. Um, for example, most of the humor in the episode is is kind of like this new thing. You still get something that's like incredibly MCU, which I would argue is the moment when the guy is like, that's my grandma's piano. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's an MCU sense of humor right there, right in there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. everything else kind of starts to wish wash into these other these other variables, which is really nice to see. Yeah. I love um, I love a joke uh of a drunk guy bumping into something and then an object and saying excuse me as if it was a person and uh, he no. does that and i was like yeah <laughs> yeah uh uh more than anything it's just nice to know with all the talk of the netflix characters coming potentially uh and very likely in some form whether or not they're the same um and knowing that she hulk is supposed to be a comedy and things like that that are uh, that we're looking ahead at. It's nice to know that the tone of the MCU no longer has to be the same tone that we were seeing in the trailers for Falcon or Loki. Yeah, um, Brandon, She-Hulk is a half-hour uh, lawyer comedy, baby. That's Boston Legal with a Green Lady. I'm excited. That's just Boston Legal with a Green Lady. I'm so I'm excited. excited. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about a little bit about rumors uh, of the Netflix heroes and things like that tomorrow when we record our. Uh, our main episode. I put that in there, so we'll t we'll uh, gab a bit about that. Cool. Um, but I don't know if there's anything else that we can be said about WandaVision. No more speculations. I think that's good. No, I, oh. I think it's extremely funny that like the aesthetic is like very old school, and then the credit sequence at the end is like the most the most 2099 <laughs> experimental shit. Like I love the end credit sequence. I love the RGB. Yeah, I love that where everything yeah. is just like the red, green, and blue. I love that. Oh my God. Red, green, blue, RGB. I thought you said Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I was like, I was oh, very yeah. confused. I, 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 mean, <laughs> I mean, rest in power. Rest in power your honor. I was but, like, uh, RBG was in this? What? No, 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 no. Red, green, and blue. Cause those are the pick. Cause remember the old TV. I know, I know. Did you, I know. Okay. I did this as a kid. Probably one of the reasons why my eyes were super messed up. But did you ever go up super close to your TV and you saw like the different pixels? No, not too many times. I don't think. <laughs> yeah because when you go up it's like that's what a cell is and that's how the colors mesh it's a difference between red green and blue 
Um, yeah, the show's great. Can't wait for more. Heck yeah. Be back I'm next okay. week. I was gonna. I was trying to uh, get in there, but um, at first I was kind of iffy on the length of the sh- of the show, like it be twenty minutes long. But then the more I thought about, it, I was like, no, this is perfect because it is. It's a yeah. A, there's no technically. There's no commercials. It's a, it's a straight line except for those mini commercials in the middle. But now that they actually hold precedence of what's going on with Wanda, I'm like, no, I'm for this because I actually you know, like them being shorter and not like not them not dragging on. You you know, Ben, to speak to that, I think. Um, with the format they chose, the 30 minute sitcom format, uh, I would feel a little tired if it was an hour long. Like, I don't yeah. want to watch the Dick Van Dyke for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, don't I, think... know, I love Dick Van Dyke. I probably could watch Dick Van Dyke for an hour, but not every week. Not the same yeah. episode. No, what I'm You're talking about the... is I don't want I don't want an hour long Dick Van Dyke show or an hour long I Love Lucy show. I don't want that. Uh, I want the nice that. bite size half hour. Although... The formula of those shows don't cater to longer lengths. Yeah. Although... Comedy works better in short bursts. <laughs> Well, let's be real. Dick Van Dyke is still a national treasure, and he needs to be protected at all costs. I love Dick Dyke. What are you gonna say? Uh, um, uh, I, 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 I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got nothing else. Okay, I, I cannot wait for next week. I want to know what's. Go- I, I'm looking forward to it, and I now I need to rewatch the second episode because I want to see like the little stuff I missed the first time because all the stuff you're mentioning now, I'm like, oh. But if you, if you don't have it read the comic, you're not gonna know what it means. <laughs> okay, when you say the comic, are you talking about the Vision comic written by Tom King? Yes, I knew it. All right. The well, credits. The credit sequence has a couple of teases there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just glad that the MCU's expansion to television is wildly successful. Yep. Uh, yep. Which we all kind of assumed it would be, but it's just nice to have it be be so. True. True. Um, I would say I look that- forward to the massive expansion of the MCU from here forward because of this. I would push back a little bit on that. Because I would say Agents of Shield, I mean Agents of Shield is still successful, but it's not as successful as I figured as I feel like it should. I the mean, you've awesome. watched all the episodes that uh, you've watched, you've seen the whole thing. I haven't seen all of it, but from what I've heard of Agents of Shield, it's kind of been up and down. Whereas this one, the this this first outing has me hooked, line sinker. I want to keep going back. To I it. think that's exactly what Spark said. Oh. That that is. Like, I don't know what you're pushing. I don't know what you're pushing back against. I was saying that this is look, none of those things were ever considered. Like, even though, look, it is bullshit to say that the Netflix shows were not designed to be part of the MCU, they literally reference the event of the Avengers that they're designed in it. Um, but but like, it was never intrinsically meant to like one for one into the MCU. This is Marvel Studios coming and making a television show, and I'm saying that has been wildly successful. What they are setting up as the trend of we are expanding our stories beyond films Okay, is going to be wildly successful and very likely how we're going to get back most of those other television characters okay. we have before. My apologies, because when you were talking about that, my brain went to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it had a good run, but has it really my been brain, a good run, though? My brain hasn't gone to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. since I stopped watching it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I actually, uh, to be perfectly honest, Sparks, I completely forgot about the Netflix shows and then out. Because when I hear tell, because when you say television, my brain goes to like ABC, uh, CBS stuff like that. Look, you know, it's like Legion, baby. Look, let me tell you, one hundred percent. Most of the Netflix stuff totally worth watching. Agents of Shield seasons four and five, fantastic. Uh, Runaways and Cloak and Dagger, great shows. Hell yeah, all of those things. MCU canon to me, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. Uh, not to like respawn that debate, like. Those things were never built to have Wanda and Vision show up uh, every week. Like yeah. this is this is and you you stop watching Endgame, you start watching Wanda Vision. It was never it was never to what Runaway well, you know, Runaways was never was never built as a show to be like okay we you stop watching Captain America Civil War okay now go watch Runaways because that's the next part of that story. It's not right, yeah. um, and that's what this that's what Marvel Studios has said. We're our stories. Our movie stories are now expanding to television. The Netflix the closest, stuff is basically like tie-ins in a way. Credit credit where credit's due. The closest that the, the previous television shows ever got to that was the ending of season one of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. where everybody was hyping on board for it because if you were watching, Hydra. you were watching as you went 
from one week of the buildup to Winter Soldier. You went to the theaters and watched Winter Soldier. You came back the next week and you were watching the aftermath of that where even Nick Fury showed up. That was and dope. That, that was dope. For that moment, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was extremely successful at expanding the MCU. Your main character, or at least one of your main characters, turns out to be Hydra. And it's a guy nobody likes, so it's cool that he's a bad guy now. But like that was, that turned that show from like a seven to like a nine, like overnight. It was crazy that we just had to wait for the story to happen. Like that's how you do it, but you don't have to do that the entire way through. Yeah. No, and then and then they stopped doing that. Like I, I it was never Absolutely. successful doing that again. A- Absolutely, it yeah. was that one moment in time where it was that synchro- synchronous. But that one moment was incredible mm-hmm. when it yeah. worked. Because they tried to recreate it leading into Age of Ultron, and it, it didn't work the same way. They also did the same thing with Thanos and all that stuff, and that did not. I don't think work well at all. That was There's even worse. Consortium of aliens who were like trying to stop Thanos. I'm like, where were you guys? Yeah. What's a way? Come on, what? What? <laughs> Bad. And then when the snap happened, because nobody at nobody at Marvel Entertainment knew the snap was coming, they were just kind of like, "Oh, I guess we exist in a different continuity now." Look, like <laughs> I, I disregard season six and seven. Uh, they they're irrelevant. So you could watch season five, and season five has an ending, and you could quit there. Yes, and it would work in the MCU. It's a little silly because basically, Age of the Shield, while Thanos is invading Earth, while it is starting to happen in New York, they're not aware of what's really going on. So they're like, "Hold on, we got to go beat up beefed up Adrian Pazdar real quick because that's the major threat to Earth at this moment." Hell yeah! <laughs> like, All right. that's- Talbot? Yeah, that's yeah. that's how the show ends. Hell yeah, Talbot. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's it. That's one division. That's some. Um, that's some um, uh, ex- extra MCU talk uh, or MCU yeah. adjacent, as I always say. Um, uh, and un- talk with you guys. <laughs> until next. Until next episode, we don't know if it's going to be next week or a week after, but until next episode. You know, sorry, sorry, real quick, just because we were talking about expanded MCU stuff, let's. I just want to Netflix. Netflix's shows are the closest we get to the kind of prestige television we're seeing here in WandaVision. Even they never went this bizarre. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, which really shows how much the Marvel Studios team has faith in their audience to stick around for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Even Netflix never went. Like, granted, like you could argue that some of those characters aren't meant for it, but some of them could have been, and. And they went really well into this. Uh, I think it was really bold what we talked about earlier that the first episode just is the television show yeah. and mm-hmm. not trying to give you that lead in. For sure. Yeah, I agree. Okay. okay. Until next episode, uh, could be next week, could be the week after. Um, we'll let you guys know when we release that episode. Uh, until uh, next, until then, I'm, uh, yes, Ben. Same Wanda time, same vision place. There you go. Well, I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. And where can they find you, Ben? <laughs> you can find me getting psyched for the next episode of WandaVision at Ben Naga 27 on Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. And uh, Sparks? Uh, you can find me um, just gelling out in my little comedy bubble. Uh, Do you set your at- own jellies? Yeah. That a girl. <laughs> at Sparks Witty on Instagram and Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. Do you want ham, eggs, cheese? Wanda, I don't eat. That explains it at the refrigerator. <laughs> All right, uh, Ryan. Hey, you can find me at DJ Tony Snark. Just really loving Catherine Hahn for all time. Uh, you can find us on, uh, of course, this YouTube channel. If you're watching this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of cool stuff. Next episode is coming uh, for the Fakener podcast is about Lupin the Third, the first, the first uh, 3D, 3D uh, animated Lupin film. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and a ton of other news and things like that. Of course, find us on fake, fake nerd podcast.com, fake nerd podcast on all social media. Um, until next time, guys, stay fake nerds. I'm going to press the remote. Pew!